<laughs> more coffee. <laughs> uh, more coffee, and that's the opening words. Hello, everyone. Uh, <laughs> of course, you know that I'm Ron, and those of you that have been watching for any period of time recognize Steve Hart. And uh, today he's going to lead the discussion on seeing the invisible. And so I'm going to let him uh, take it away and uh, share with us some of the insight that he has on, uh, on that subject. Again, seeing the invisible is the title. Good morning. And it is morning. I, I, even though it's almost 11 o'clock, which is actually after 11 o'clock here on, in uh, Florida, um, I'm, it's, I'm a little bit slow about waking up some days. And uh, <laughs> so when Ron contacted me and said, do you want to do this this morning? I'm going, uh, can't we do it this afternoon? <laughs> oh, we could have. <laughs> yeah, well, I, uh, I, I start connecting to spirit and start getting the information. And I, so that's why we're, we're moving with it now. And, uh, and I, I do have more coffee and that helps out. So, you know. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, seeing the invisible. Uh, this is one thing that I have uh, uh, learned over the past 15 years. There's always been this sense of seeing the invisible within my childhood and in my rearing. But um, in the last 15 years, it's become more real to me. And what do I mean by that? Well, you know, when I'm talking about seeing the invisible, I'm talking about um, um, going beyond the five senses, you know, and not just seeing with our eyes, but um, seeing with our whole being, if I can say it that way. Um, we, we limit ourselves uh, by what we um, see when we focus out here into this world. And you've heard me talk about this before, about how we have a tendency to focus on the outer instead of the inner. And to see, to see the invisible, you have to focus on the inner being within you because uh, we are connected that's where the connection is to the invisible um, um so we have the ability to see these see the invisible uh the reason we don't see those things is because we're not really connecting to the inner part of us that is part of the invisible once again i remind people that we are spiritual beings having a human experience well if we're spiritual beings we're part of the invisible world and we're more than just these bodies. And uh, so that's what I want to emphasize. And I'm assuming that people understand, uh, the people who are listening, that, that the, the world in which we live in is nothing but energy patterns in flow, in motion, in light, in consciousness, um, without having to try to convince people of that. Um, so I'm going to make that assumption that they understand at least at least the part that everything is energy in flow and in motion. So my point is that there is not only just that, but there are energy patterns. Everything that's created in our thought patterns uh, to our feelings and emotions to the physical form itself, meaning this coffee cup and you know the, this headset I'm wearing, it's all uh, part of a, an energy pattern that's been created question is where does it come from uh, where, how are these energy patterns created um, uh, I, in my opinion they've always existed that's true, uh, that is true. <laughs> from the very beginning of creation itself and uh, Anastasia not only sees the invisible within herself she can see look back in time thousands of years and even see the future because all that's part of the invisible realm uh, and she's able to touch base with that. And I probably should have brought one of the books here to the desk with me, but I, but I didn't do that. Well, maybe you can post that later on. Yes. Uh, that's true. The, the, everything, the energy patterns have been created. They're, they're already in existence. And what we're doing as uh, we, as humans, spiritual beings having a human experience, what we're doing is we're bringing those energy patterns into the third dimension and having this experience with those energy patterns because in the invisible they already are exist but what we have to do to if i as i understand it what we have to do is we have to create within the invisible realm the energy pattern that we want to bring into the physical so the energy patterns are already there but what we have to do is we have to sh uh, shift them or shape them through our consciousness is what we're doing yeah, the part of the problem is I, I, I'm sure you'll agree that uh, that the leaders in our world have fragmented 
the things so that we definitely we, so. even even when we see the invisible we usually see only one dot of the invisible the part that we're trained to focus on be it medicine and, and well that's exactly right and that's where i want to go with this because the point is is that the cabal or those who are the elite you're refer, making reference to they are very much aware of all of this Yes. And they are manipulating and using us against us to enslave us. I forgot to turn my phone off here. And um, so, yeah, that, that is the truth. That is true. They're aware of that. So we need to become more aware of what, who we are and, our, and be aware of what they know so that they cannot use it against us. But let me, let's go back before, before we get to that point. Let, I want to make an emphasis about the fact that this is real. There is a universal law, which I know is a law of correspondence, but most people know it as the law as above, so below, as within, so without. And that's, that law does not change. I don't care at any time point in time or any planet in the universe in which you live upon. That is a true statement. That, that, in, that whatever is in the physical comes out of the invisible, and it's created that energy pattern that comes into physical, like this coffee cup. I mean, somebody had to come up with this idea, how to design this idea as a thought pattern before it became physical, and they actually made the cup itself. We do that with everything. That's how things are created into a physical form. But what we don't understand is that we are the generators of that energy or the, to, to allow those patterns to, to come into existence. We have the power to, um, I'll use the word manipulate or rather to create or however you want to perceive it. You know, there's different ways of perceiving it. We are creators, but we were taught that we weren't. That's exactly right. We, and, and, and because of the fact that we're taught not to understand that and to focus on the outside instead of the inward, that's why we get so confused about how this transformation is supposed to be taking place. Because we have a tendency to want to focus out here and not focus inside, and the transformation is really taking place in, in here in the invisible and when we create it in the invisible it eventually comes out into the physical and in there you see you got the this the pattern of infinity you know okay, it starts here and it moves out into the physical so that, that's the pattern that, that it creates so there is a a, a vibrational density meaning uh, as things come out of the invisible into physical so the it becomes more dense as with our thought patterns, and, and we're capable of doing that. Um, and, I, and I assume that your listeners have seen the uh, videos of the sound vibrations creating the uh, oh. sand on the plates and, and different frequencies. I know I have. I can't speak for yeah. everybody, obviously. Yeah, well, I hope that they have. Uh, if you haven't seen it, just type in sound vibrational energy patterns on in YouTube, and I'm sure you'll find that. But each frequency creates the same pattern. And those frequencies, um, to understand that, that that right there is the beginning of understanding what I'm talking about. And then we have to understand that thoughts or emotions that we hold in our heart and in our mind, they create the same type of patterns into our world. Okay? Now, I know this sounds a little bit like a lot of woo-woo science, and I'm not a physicist, and I'm not going to claim to be, but I, am, I do know what I'm telling you about the fact that energy – uh, patterns um, are out here in this world, and here's the thing that I want people to understand. You can learn how to read them. You can learn how to understand them. And the way, only way you can do that is by going within and opening up into your higher self and allowing your third eye, to, which is the pineal gland, to open up and to actually show you these patterns. In the movie The Matrix, that was one, the one scene when, when, yeah. when Neo began to understand he actually saw The Matrix as it was, which was nothing but dots, I mean numbers and zeros and, and um, digits. And, um, and, but those were the energy patterns, and I know it's, it's, it's just a, a movie, but the point I'm making is, is I have begun to experience in my own being – this capability of reading the energy patterns and seeing them and constantly now spirit is showing me these energy patterns that are set that I can actually alter through my thought patterns and with my heart. Now, now let's, let's go back to what you were saying about, about the cabal and the fact they, they know this and they are using this against us. 
and they're, they're actually creating energy patterns that they want in, in the spirit world or in the invisible realm, okay, through their intentions because that's what they want, and then they move that into technology and the media. So they, they've choreographed this very well. They've taken control of the media and the, uh, most of the technology is we were seeing in years past, and they are using that to manipulate these energy patterns or vibrational patterns, and that's why we get stuck. That's why we're programmed to believe uh, what they want us to believe. Now, the secret behind this is, is the focus. Where you put your focus at, that's where energy patterns are going to follow. Now, so if we're being sucked into the, the matrix or the machine through the media and through technology at their favor, then we're going to uh, be deceived by this and believe that it's real. And, and they work off of our emotions. When they put things in the media, they, are, they know that and in movies, it, 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 there are little things that they do that they're, they're very conscious of, that their actually intent is to, to manipulate us and to get us to respond with our emotions. Yeah, and in fact, you mentioned The Matrix a couple of times now, and in that, there was one scene that, that stands out in my mind from that when they were firing their uh, weapon at him, the bullets, like hit an invisible screen. And that was the same thing that happened with Anastasia uh, when they tried to uh, take her into custody. The the bullets just sort of, you know, dropped to the just dropped to the ground and disintegrated. They didn't reach her except for the first one got through before she put the screen up, so to speak. And, and I believe, as I'm saying, whatever's coming at us, like a bullet or a thought pattern or an energy pattern, whatever it is. The, the, the secret is, is for us to know how to hold the intent of what we want and to focus upon we want, not focus upon the bullet, not focus. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm not an idiot. I'm not going to walk in front of a bullet, you know. At the same time, um, I'm st I am learning how to focus my thought patterns uh, upon that which I want instead of reacting. Um, so the, 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 the thing I'm trying to, to – emphasize here is to stay focused upon what you want what your intention is so stop reacting to what we see out here because it's so easy to get sucked up into the drama of what's going on in the world and not staying focused upon what on the inner world which is where the real work is is to be done so you well, like my conundrum is this i think people have to learn how to focus within and when they see what's within, then they need to have, know how to apply that in the world around them. Oh, I'll even... So I'll it's, even it's, not, it's not an ignoring of the world around you. I'm, I'm in total agreement with that. I'm not saying ignore. I'm not... We are still physical, in physical form. And I'm not saying to ignore what we see out here. I'm just saying that we have the ability to manipulate this. Yes, and Just as the cabal, have, they know this too. So we have, in the, we, and I say we, and that means the collective, we have the uh, consciousness of everyone. We have the ability to manipulate this ourselves. But see, we don't, we are having trouble figuring that out. While we're in the physical form, we still have a tendency to believe in the machine itself instead of actually seeing ourselves as spiritual beings with the generators of this energy, as you're just saying. So that, that's exactly right. So what we do, here's the deal. Here's how I see it. You see what's out here. You can call it what it is, but you can when you call it what it is. The first thing to understand what it really truly is, and then to be able to uh, declare what you want it to be. And you're you're not you know ignoring. You're not covering your eyes. You're not covering your ears. You know you're right. and you're not being silent as much. You need to speak your truth. You need to see what is there, and there, that is part of the process of this transformation that needs to take place. Yeah. I, I agree, and and it is an inner and an outer. There, there's a there's a dance between the inner and the outer it is. It when is. all of this takes place. That's right. We have to learn how to to see the kingdom of heaven within us. That's right. And then we have to determine the best way that we can think of using our gifts, talents, and abilities. That's right. <laughs> to apply it to apply it in our lives and in. Uh, 
uh, conjunction with those around us that may resonate at some level the same as we're resonating. And it's important to find that uh, mutual resonance uh, because right. that, that actually helps us uh, increase the strength of what is going on inside of us. That's so true, Ron. Keeping the balance, keeping the balance between this world and the, and the invisible and, and, and understanding our relationship with that. Um, and, and not reacting, but by making choices, actual conscious choices about what it is that we want, because we are so reactionary in the way we think. Um, but here's what I found. I have found a great deal of freedom by learning to raise my level of vibration, by expanding my consciousness, that I'm actually experiencing less reactionary um, moments. Um, and, and it's, it's been very interesting because years ago, if, if something would have happened or somebody would have said something, I would have reacted and, and yelled at them or, uh, you know, taken an attitude. And today it's, it, it's, it's dissolving, you know, that, that hold to, for me to react. Um, but it's a conscious choice that I have made, uh, there, and there's been a real transformation within my being. It's not just, in my head, I'm not just going. Okay, no, 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 no. I'm not going to do that. No, I can't. I can. Only, I'm very limited as to how much I can control my thought patterns. But what I can do is I can hold in my heart pattern, along in harmony with my mind, uh, the uh, vibration that I choose to have, and that's what's happening. You know, uh, you know. I I teach uh, what I call ascension consciousness, which is actually uh, steps of expanding your levels of consciousness and there's a full description of each level as you expand yourself and it, it makes total sense it makes total um well it's not just logical but it's also experientially it, it, there's a release at each level there's a new release it takes you up to the next level and once you get moving up that that uh, out of fear and into love it pulls you up and it's it's an amazing experience that i've been uh, having in my own life, and I've been sharing with other people through my workshops. So. Yeah, the hard part for me, of course, is staying at any at, at any uh, of the advanced, uh, more enlightened levels uh, for long periods of time. I, and traffic, getting in, getting in traffic, is one oh. of the ways that shows it up <laughs> for me. When when somebody when the light's red and I'm behind somebody and they're not going. You know, oh, I can't yeah. believe you brought that up because I've been dealing with that for a long time. <laughs> and just this last week, I got a, a new release on that. Can I share with you what happened? Of course. Uh, um, yeah, I don't know what it is about we humans in our cars and driving in traffic. <laughs> but, you know, I've throughout my life have had trouble uh, you know, with some degree of road rage. Let's put it this way. Years ago when my children were – living with me they said dad if you're going to keep acting like that we don't want to ride with you in the car <laughs> <laughs> and you were driving, yell at right <laughs> yeah i was driving yeah and, and uh, uh you know so anyway the point is i I've, i know that that has been a, a challenge for me and even in my enlightened state that i'm experiencing right now i still have was having uh, experiences of, of some degree of road rage and uh, as you just described well uh, I'm scary. learning to laugh at myself when I get. Oh yeah, I, oh I laugh, but I also go, "Why am I doing? That? Why am I yelling at this guy? Why am I saying this? Because in my mind, because or even verbally in my car, because I would never do it in front of them if they were standing there. I wouldn't be treating them that way. You wouldn't call them an idiot if. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And now there've been, t you know, there are times even when I blow the horn sometimes when I probably shouldn't. You know, um, here's the point. Here's here's what Spirit revealed to me. I can't control, nor is it my job to control anybody else. We can have laws, stipulations as to rules of how we drive our cars on the roads, but it's not my job to enforce them. Not only that, but it's not my job to point out in my own mind where they're wrong. And my job is only this. And when I got this understanding this is how I got freed from begin to experience some freedom. My job is only to get me and my car to where it is. I'm going, whatever happens around me, I have no control of that. I just need to stay focused on me and my vehicle, which I'm in control of. 
that's where my responsibility is, and getting it to where it is I'm going. That's all. And when I begin to say, <laughs> yeah, right, it's true. Yeah, now and 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 to look out for other people too, you know, to to uh, yield to them. That's part of me being responsible for myself and my car. At the same time, um, I'm 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 taking ownership of my responsibility when I'm driving behind the wheel, and not trying to control or manipulate what is out there among other people. See that that is one of the things I'm. See that's what the cabal has been doing. They're trying. They're manipulating other people. And they're manipulating they're, they're, whole societies. Yes, right. Of course they are. Yeah, right. And we know that. But see, that's that's their tactics. And we have a tendency as, with, as humans to fall into that. And, and monkey that, see, monkey do. Yes, exactly <laughs> right. So we're now learning how to let go of those energy patterns that are set into the machine or the matrix. And uh, – and it's it's tough. It is tough. And you're right. It's staying staying at a higher vibration is not always easy. And I'm and I'm confessing with you that I've I have had some struggles myself. But this that's been my release. And I, I I'm constantly asking spirit, you know, because I I I hear myself having these thoughts or, or whatever it is I know. And they and and I don't desire those thoughts. They're not really me. They're not something I want to hold on to. It's not in my heart. So, you know, the thoughts come in there. Well, they're just part of the energy patterns of the matrix that I'm living in right the now. collective consciousness, yeah. and it, it, it seeps in. I mean, we're part of that. Yes. We're not, we're not uh, independent of it. No. Uh, you know, we live and swim and live and move and have our being yes. in, in that sea of consciousness. Right. And so we are learning how to heal, <laughs> if you can say it that way, and letting releasing and letting go. That's the that is the healing process. It's just being released from our attachments for what we think is right. You know what we think. You know that's not right. You know. Well, well, self righteousness is one of the one of the things that the cabal has used to continue the the warfare between classes yes. and groups of people. Definitely so. Uh, so but if, if it's re, if it's religious, uh, spiritual pride, whatever you want to call it, or or just uh, patriotism for our country, or feeling like we're all we're we're out there policing the world to keep it safe place, that that is really has been used against us because it's really once again, it's, it's, not, it's not our job to do that to control other people, and, and it's not their job either. That's oh no 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 that's no the that's irony. True. It's it no one's job to control anyone but themselves. Yeah, but they've been convinced that that it is their job, just as we have been convinced to try to control, control uh, people <laughs> that we're driving in traffic with. It, it, the point I'm making is that they they themselves are uh, fooled into believing this, and they have using this esoteric. Um, knowledge that they have about the fact that we are energy generators and they have manipulated these this the system to to hold us in these in this negative energy pattern so um, so I, I'm encouraging the listeners to uh, learn how to make a choice and the way you make a choice is by first recognizing when you what you do and do not want and then connecting to your higher self and opening yourself up to the possibilities of what could be, what could really be happening. And that, that when you open up into what could be the possibilities, that's when spirit begins to reveal to you the kingdom of God or reveals reveal to you uh, the spiritual uh, truth about who you are, which is a source of love. Yeah. We are made to, and it's first loving ourselves. I mean, people say you've got to love your neighbor. No, it's love your neighbor as as yourself. And the problem is, as I see it, is we have been so brainwashed to believe we're less than that it makes it a challenge. It's almost egotistical to love yourself. And then yep. that's the way it's been made to appear, but it's false. And what that is here again is this um, energy pattern that says uh, it makes an accusation against against you. I mean, who are you to, you know, whatever, you know, well, yes, you're right. I am, my responsibility is to love myself and then to love, let that love flow over to, uh, to mankind. To the well, rest when we do us. love ourselves, loving our neighbor becomes almost secondhand. I mean, yeah. a bit when you recognize that you 
it, it's not just loving yourself, but it's knowing who you are. It's not egotistically loving yourself. Right. It's loving yourself as the spiritual being that is connected to all life. Well, the, the energy patterns in the in the matrix, in the system, it teaches us how to defend ourselves to the point where uh, we become aggressors and we become um, um, evil in our acts, meaning that we actually threaten and destroy one another. And uh, we think it's in the act of love, but we don't understand what love is. When you're when you're stuck in those energy patterns, you you think that uh, well. For a long time, I used to believe that war was a, a way of life, and now I don't see it that way at all. In fact, well, I've watched videos of, of individuals that have been involved in the wars uh, that the United States has been in, and they've had total changes of heart. You've probably seen oh, those videos as well. Yeah, I, I was never in the military, Ron, but I, but um, what I know, uh, I'll tell you, that's true. I, I, I've been, I've talked to people who've been in the military, who've been in wars, and um, my heart goes out to them. Um, I'm, I, I do believe that we need to have a military to defend ourselves, but not to the acts in which we've been corrupted it's been corrupted to create the, the activity that we as the United States Army or military have uh, have, have instigated because they're, they're being controlled by the cabal right now too so um, the, the point I'm making is is is, is for us to wake up <laughs> to the truth of this and to un and, and, and to find a balance here again as I we just brought this thing about the military I mean and even even owning a gun in your own home, I mean, I believe believe that people should be able to defend themselves uh, if they if they choose to have a gun, they should be able to have that. And we, as a nation, be able, should be able to be able to defend ourselves. At the same time, to become aggressors, to allow that to be to use that for corruption, and anybody could take a, a gun and become aggressive and go out and try to manipulate and control the world. Um, Did you ever watch the movie? Uh, where they had uh, a, a, like a it was a it was Christmas Day and they decided to stop shooting at each other. The Germans and the Americans oh, were across. No, the, it's yeah. not just a movie; it's a true story. Oh yes, it's a true story. Oh yeah, yeah. And I, they I, couldn't after after they had gotten together and and talked to each other and uh, ate food together and everything, they could no longer continue the war. They had to send them off in different directions. And not only that, but they had to threaten them. The, the, oh, yes. uh, the leaders of each army had to threaten their soldiers to go back and fight again. And you're right. It, man. <laughs> it shows we have bad leadership. <laughs> <laughs> that, it shows that, but it also shows you how easily we were manipulated. Yes, because we we were manipulated to believe in whatever it is we're fighting for, as though is that that's the truth. And uh, we, as a, a country in America, we've been very proud about who we are. But even pride itself, it, which is higher than fear and anger, is still a low vibrational uh, energy compared to what we call neutrality or acceptance of what is. And the, the, the challenge is, is that we hold us pride. Well, we're a proud nation. We're, now we've learned to become a, 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 a courageous nation. Yeah. So, are we running out of time? One minute. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and we kind of got off the subject here about seeing the invisible, but, but that's what it's all about. The only way you can comprehend and understand what this is all about is by seeing the invisible. And the way to see the invisible, as I mentioned a while ago, is, is through the third eye, through opening up your, through meditation, getting quiet, go within, and begin to focus on those things, and you'll begin to understand what's going on out here. Yeah, that's true. And I thank you, Steve, for taking the time once again to uh, share about seeing the invisible and other things that came into the conversation. Yeah. It's always interesting because we never know exactly where it's going to go. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> but I appreciate you taking the time, and, uh, and we'll put this up on, uh, on YouTube for tomorrow's video. So Great. thank you very much, and namaste. <laughs>